However, when the British Navy first bombard bombarded Lagos in 1851, their interest was the extensive networks that would be developed from the coastal territory to open up the interior to trade and profit. Britain was basically interested looking at Lagos and its network, the fact that Lagos has the key to assess the hinterland of Nigeria. Now, first, because of the reports of their explorers, the reports of their travelers, the report of missionaries, they already have a very clear impression of the coastal region of Nigeria today from Lagos up to the Niger Delta in Bakas. Therefore, they look at Lagos as strategic. So if they could get Lagos, from there they could move to the hinterland. Then they also identify the bites of Benin and the bites of the Afra, which again was also strategic to the interests of the British. That is why when Lagos was first bombarded in 1851, it was not because of the excuse of slavery, but because they were interested in trade and profit. Ten years after the conquest and annexation of Lagos in 1861 invoked their theology of the British imperial power and its explanation for the legitimacy and benefits of its foreign rule. From 1861, Lagos was built as a capital and declared a grand colony in 1862. From there, Britain began to expand its influence to other parts of Nigeria through dominance and the exercise of military power. The use of military force and the threat to exercise it was central to the consolidation of British territories in Nigeria. These conditions, of course, Britain was able to coerce a few of the coastal states, chiefdoms and kingdoms after Lagos had been conquered. Uh, today we talk about Lagos, uh, Egberland, Baragri, and so, Isheri, etc. Uh, at the time of British bombardment, conquest and annexation of Lagos, Lagos was limited in the thinking of the British conquerors to the island itself, where we are located at the moment. However, Britain continued its conquest from Lagos to move hinterland up to Yorubala to Odoyo, then of course to Benin, to Calabar, Niger Delta, to the north, even as far as to Zaria, Kanu, Borono, and Sokoto. In the first decade of the 20th century, Britain from Lagos had consolidated its imperial power in Nigeria and also laid the foundations that have lasted until today, particularly in the use of English as a foreign language. The legal system, economic policies and practices, urban and regional development, and administrative organization, much of which persists to the present. Uh, in this presentation, I also look at European imperialism in 19th century Africa. Definitely questions will be asked. We we'll see that Britain was acting solo by the conquest and annexation of Lagos. Certainly not. 19th century was the age of the new imperialism, where European powers, particularly Britain, France, Germany, and Portugal began to scramble for territories in Africa. Well, like I explained, the moves on the part of these powers, European powers, particularly between 1876 and 1800, 
gave a clear indication that they were all committed to colonial expansion and the establishment of formal control in Africa. As this finally concerned both Britain and Germany, you know, to also establish formal controls in Africa. Now, an important key to understanding modern Nigerian history is the penetration of the country by European traders and missionaries. European influence in, in the coastland began during the era of the Atlantic slave trade, which lasted for about 400 years and until it was abolished in the early 19th century. And it was this time that Britain began to take interest, like other European powers, to change from slave trade to legitimate commerce. Now, in this paper, I also add that some of my colleagues who are historians, they have classified generally the period of European scramble and partition into two. And they use the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 85, the events before the Berlin Conference and the events after the Berlin Conference. But my own argument and interpretation is not tied to the Berlin Conference, but however, it is tied to the Lagos factor. That is why I explain that there were two phases in the expansion of British influence in Nigeria. First, the period of informal political control up to the conquest of Lagos in 1861. From the early 19th century up to the naval bombardment of Lagos in 1851 and the conquest of Lagos in 1861, there was on the side of Britain informal political control. But the second period is the period we classify as after 1861, when Britain formally established political control in Lagos.